Scott on script, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first, let's talk a little bit about uh, basic programming. Uh, again, I'm going to talk with Swift because that's what I know more than JavaScript. So if we look at the uh, Swift language, all programming has to do with uh, basic um, operations. A lot of what we do is math, right? In a program, math is very important. Even if you're making a game, I remember one of the first games I made was a, a, a goose shooting game where there was goose would fly across the screen and you had to shoot them with a gun, right? So there was math involved, mostly the position of where the, the person's shooting at, right? There's your coordinates on the screen, there's the map right there. Um, the interaction between the, the bullet and, and the goose, there's map there. The position of the geese flying across the screen was randomized by, by the height of the screen. Uh, and then the speed of the geese flying across the screen, that was random as well. But all of that was math. We do a lot of math in operation, of course, using the most common operators. First one I want you to see here is is how we name things to do math. Of course, it's just like algebra, right? You would use x and y and things like that, right? Okay, so we need to name things and then use those names of things in something else. In any programming language, this is very common. Uh, and at least in Swift here, that let is a constant and the variable is var. Okay, what is the difference? Well, the let is a constant, which means b is equal to ten. The 10, B will always equal 10. Constant means it never changes. Even throughout your programming, B will always be 10. Never changes. Constant. Variable, though, as you see here, A equals 5. A can change. I can, end, you know, two lines down, I can say, hey, you know, uh, A equals 2. And boom, A is 2 then. Okay, so and this is very common where you have something that never changes and something that always that can change. So that's a very common thing here. And you'll see that in the JavaScript as well. I'm just pointing that there. Then again, you have uh, basic math operations. You have if statements. If one does this, then that. I use a lot of if statements for games as well. Um, a lot of guessing games, I use if statements. If they put this, think of a guessing game, right? If they type in the word, you know, uh, um, in a game, does it equal the uh, the answer? If not, then say incorrect. If it does equal, then say correct. If statements are very used for comparing something. I use it a lot for comparing. I teach a, uh, in the Swift class, we teach a hangman game, right? And the people have to guess the letters. And uh, you know, then we use if statements to compare that. Again, you have common arithmetic, you know, add, subtract, multiplication, and division, and so on, um, and so on. So, you know, those are common. Oh, and the, the, this percentage right here in Swift, this would be written as this. This is in JavaScript as well. Uh, that's going to be one of your answers. The, the uh, what is that, a percentage sign? Calculates the following equation. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, then of course you have your equal to. Two equals equals equal to. Not equal to will be explanation point and equal. Of course, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Those are very common in there. So we're not going to go through all that. Strings and characters, of course, are very important. A string is basically when you're talking words, right? So instead of the computer seeing it as characters, it sees them as words. How do you define a string? A string, of course, with quotation marks. Just like that. Let some string equals some string literally. Okay, so again, what was let? A constant, right? So some string is always going to equal this. Okay? Again, not seeing quotes. So usually names of things will use quotes. It would be a string. Very useful um, and and doing things with characters, with letters, with words. You know, a lot of programs use words. Um, and you can do multiple lines, as you can see. 
And in fact, when you, if you do something in, in more programming, I remember in my C class when I was taking C, we could determine how long the string is. Is it a short string, less than 255 characters? If it's a long string, it's uh, more than 255 characters. And we measure things in characters usually in the computer when we're measuring things. A character, is, even a space is a character. See, that would be a character. So character length is, is common. Um, and then there is line breaks. Uh, I don't know what else I want to say here. Just a, a string is very important. Oh, you can have emojis in there. We do. I do a, a game with emojis as well. Where you know, what is your favorite emoji? Uh, collection in 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 collection type known as arrays, set, and dictionaries. That's where you you have a group of things that are set together, right? So maybe you have a group of 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 food you like. You could put them, you could either do them in a string or in a value. Uh, most things in programming start with zero when we number things, so keep that in mind. You don't start with one. Everything in programming starts with zero, just because that's the way you can see it there. It starts with zero. Um, so you can have groups of things. Um, we usually have a, a collection of things in an array. Um, you can have multiple values. Uh, you can let's just look at this one. There's a variable called shopping list, and we declared it as a string, and then in the string we put uh, quotes between them, and then I can add to that string, like I have eggs, milk, but then I can add to the shopping list, uh, um, bread, things like that. So very common way of looking at. Um, uh, a way of doing that. You don't necessarily have to define in Swift that it is a, a string like this. See how it said that? One thing that's very important about, you know, Apple thinks that they're great. They really do. And, you know, one of the things that they love about their programming language is that it's inferred. It's what the word inferred means says that the program can kind of figure out what your data is from how you wrote it. Like in this case right here, you'll notice it says variable shopping list, then in a normal programming language like JavaScript or something, you would have to say, hey, it's going to be a string, and then you list your string characters here. But, you know, Apple thinks, hey, Swift is the greatest programming language ever made. They use what's called inference or infer, and so the programming language, would you could remove the string. You don't need that because it's going to see this and say, hey, it's a string because you put quotes around the words. And so if you look down below here, if you look down below here, you'll see you could write the same thing right there. Inference. Inference is the term that they use to describe it. So it's inferred that, hey, this is going to be a string because of the way you wrote it. The other one, of course, is if you're, if you're not doing a string and you're doing number, you have to use integer, I-N-T, to integer. And, of course, it would infer that as well if you put numbers in here. Um, Okay, so at least that's that's a common one there. And then, of course, uh, what's under flow here? Uh, flow is a loop. A loop is where you, you want to do things over and over again. That's a, actually probably one of the biggest problems in programming is where you make a loop and it never stops looping. That's where your program crashes a lot, where you actually have it doing something and then it gets stuck inside a loop. Okay, usually in a loop you want it to get out. You only do it a few times. Okay, in this case, let names equal, of course, there's your array, right? And then for name, in names, okay, and basically you're telling name to be the names, right? And so you're holding place. So when you look in programming language, a lot of times there's data and then there's a place to hold the data, okay? So a lot of times name is holding what's in name here, okay? And then print, print below name, of course, and then it puts the, the difference in there. Okay, so if this relates to this, this relates to that. First, this tells this to be this list, and then second, it then needs to pull that data out or return the value. We use the word return in programming when we want to pull data out of something, right? We want to return it, we want to pull the data out, and we want to return the data. So that is very important there as far as that is concerned. And you can see a loop there. Uh, functions are basically self-contained programs. Uh, he talked about that in the video. 
Okay, so a function, you can optionally define one or more name type values, and a function takes input known as parameters. So in, in, in programming, we add functions to, to, it's like you're building a blueprint, like he talked about in the video. If you remember the video, he says, oh, we're building the blueprint and then making houses from the blueprint, right? Did you remember that in the video? Well, the function is very similar. As you can see there, he's making it, we're making a greeting. Right? In the, at least in this example right here, you're making a greeting. That greeting is going to have a person in there, okay, which is a person's name. Hence, it's a string, right? A word, a string. Okay? And then you can say hello, and then person, and then return the greeting. Okay? Well, again, this makes the word greeting equal what this is up here, but it's adding the word hello. So then I can add and I can make the person be multiple people. I could make the person be Sally, Jim, whatever, Tom, whatever. And so I can make a bunch of greetings from this function. So this is kind of a self-contained program, and then I can reuse it over and over and over again. Hence is object-oriented programming, just like in the video. Does that make sense? Uh, whatever. Closure. Let's kind of pull in the names out. Enums. Um, I don't know if we need to go in there, but case statements are very useful. I was using them a long time ago in a programming language we used to call, uh, what was it called? Auto Action Script. Action Script was a programming language that we used to use to program it in the late 90s. It was for uh, Flash. And uh, it was a very good uh, programming language. I, I liked it a lot. Um, we also had some Western um, action scripting. And I used this a lot as well. As it's a, a great way to switch between things. They also called switch switching as well, which allowed you to, to do things quickly by comparing things. Right? In this case, you want the compass is pointing in a direction, north, south, east, or west. So if it's pointing north, do this. If it's pointing south, do that. If it's pointing east, do this. If it's pointing west, do that. It's a great way to test your program to see what it's doing and then have it act upon that without having to write if statements, right? This is taking place of the if statement. In the, in, in, in the if statement, you would have to write, if it's pointing north, then do this, right? If it's pointing west, then do that. This takes the, you don't have to write in this case, you use this enum, and then it tests it, and it takes the place of the if statement. So it just like saves time. And it's been around for a long time. Like I said, in the late 90s, I was making games with it. I was using it. I remember one time I had the students make a car game where the where the where they would follow the mouse. So as the, the cursor moved around the screen, the car would follow the cursor. But once it got to a certain point, as, as the car was rotating, it got to a point it then was pointing east, and then I had the car fly across the screen at another person, right? And so it was very similar to that. I'd have to try. I maybe should bring some old programs in. I'd love to show you some old ones. Oh, oh there you go. This is exactly what I was just saying. So that takes place of the if statement. Then we have structs and classes. These are a little bit more advanced than the function, right? The function was just like a little thing that I could reuse over and over again, where class is a bigger thing that you could use. And remember I talked about in, in my uh, Hangman game that, that I would have like three different files, three different Swift files, and I would break the logic up of the game into three different, three different files. And in those files is like classes that do a lot of things so you could think of the structs and the classes of being larger programs. Um, I don't know how to explain it more there for right now. Uh, properties is where you have values attached to your um, program, right? In this case, you could make a struct or a class, give it a name, and then say how big it is what color it is, 
how far from the edge it is, and so on. So that's a good way of going about it. And then methods is what it's doing. We kind of talked about that in the video. And so on. Okay, so let's move on. I just wanted to give you, I can explain the Swift much easier than JavaScript. That's why I wanted to go through that. Let's get to the JavaScript. Uh, again, in the JavaScript, uh, uh, it was made in the, in the mid-90s to be a programming language for your web browser. Now, it's not as advanced as, it's pretty advanced though. I mean, you can do almost anything. Think of when you, when you use Canvas, right? When you're using Canvas, you're doing some pretty spectacular things, I think so. You know, you're doing a test, right? Remember you go and you choose which button for the, uh, uh, you know, A, B, C, D. That's programmed in Java right there, or a version of Java. There's a, a JavaScript, I'm sorry, this version of JavaScript. And that's, that's basically what Facebook is, right? They use Ruby on Rails, which is a version of JavaScript, right? And so on. And so there's a lot of tweaks to JavaScript that have been um, kind of used. And then there's raw JavaScript that, that is called vanilla, I believe, or something like that, that is straight JavaScript that's not using extra. So what is this extra JavaScript that I'm talking about? And then there's JScript and all these others, is that people have built classes and they've built pre-made content for the JavaScript and then you just call to it. And one of the ones I used to use in the early days was, um, what was that called? I'll have to remember, I can't, can't remember right now, but I used to use an early version of JavaScript uh, that had, again, a lot of the same things I just talked about would be the array and so on. And of course, although there are similarities between JavaScript and Java, including language syntax and standard libraries, um, they are not the same. JavaScript and such as that, and so on. And, and of course, let, let's just look at one example. Oh yeah, again, it began in Netscape was the first version of JavaScript. And now, you know, the Mozilla browser is what we really use, or the Firefox. So let's use an example. Of course, let's go to Google for a moment. Okay, so Google uses JavaScript a lot. JavaScript a lot. So in this case, they use something called AJAX, which is called Asynchronous JavaScript to program the search box. What is happening? Every time you type a letter, it sends a message to Google that you typed that letter, and then Google starts sending you back data right away. That is JavaScript right there. Here we go. I type in, I'm looking for turkey, right? T. Okay. Oh, as soon as I hit that T, boom, the message went from the browser to Google. Google, boom, sent back, hey, this is it. Like that, in less than a second, right? That's referred to as asynchronous JavaScript, or AJAX is the short term for that. That is a version of JavaScript right there. And then so I go T, boom, another one, okay? And there you go. So you start typing in right there. JavaScript's been using, or Google's been using JavaScript for years for that. What is that? Okay, well, that's a call in that the browser is constantly looping, right? What is happening in your browser? It's, it's always thinking. It's never stopped thinking. Okay, it's always looping. Okay. It's called the dynamic object model. The DOM, okay? And it's basically, it's a way of breaking the browser up into pieces and, and, and looking for what's going on. Okay, so when I hit the, the button, it calls. Okay, so. It's called the document object model. Okay. Well, basically, you really, uh, it's a way of breaking the data up into smaller pieces. But probably the most important thing about the DOM is that it's always looking at what the user's doing. Where is the cursor at, right? You ever notice when you roll the mouse over? Look at that. It highlights. Boom, boom. See how the, the text, high, see the, the, the rollover effect, right? So that's constantly, constantly. So it'd be good for you to read that. Uh, here's a version of, of Java, JScript. Here's all the different versions of JavaScript that we, we look at today. Ruby, like I said, is what Facebook is built upon. Python, 
right? You, we have Python classes, right? And so on. So there's a bunch of different programming languages right here. They're all object oriented. Uh, Ajax we just talked about and so on. And then we watched the video and then uh, we're going to go and do these exercises right now. So let me pause my video for a moment. Okay, so in the, uh, my first talk, we talked a lot about variables and, of course, remember constants, right? So in this case, uh, JavaScript used variables just like I would use variables inside of Swift. And so for the first part of the exercise, it's asking you know, how to name a variable. It's very simple. As you can see, they're basically telling you how to name it. Now, one of the things you'll notice about programming is that a lot of times we'll do the, the naming with a capital N or a capital letter. The second part of the circle is the naming of something. It helps that you see it, that it's a name, right? You're, you're reinforcing. So uh, I can't remember the name to describe that. What is the name to describe that? Anybody know? Uh, I, it'll come to me. There's a term for that. So it's car with a capital N, A M E. And of course, all we need to do is write Volvo in there V O L V O. And then if you show answer, Boom. Oh, I didn't want to show answer. I wanted to, oh, submit answer. Boom. Correct. One done. Woo. Okay, so that was very easy. You have a name and a name, right? Next one. Again, this is just like the value before. We're going to do X, and then we put 50 in there. Very simple. And you say, hey, submit answer. Boom. Boy, we're going through so quickly. Okay, next exercise. Okay, now this one's a little bit different, but here, here we go. Okay, in this case, you want to display the sum of 5 plus 10 using two variables, x and y, right? So the first thing you want to do is, of course, you want to give a variable to x because x is not there. You see y there, right? So the first thing we're going to do is put x in there, and then you want to assign that to 5, right? And so variable y equals 10. So document get element by id demo dot enter html <coughs> and so what do you think you're going to put in there plus exactly put the plus in there and say submit answer boom okay very good next again we're going to do something very similar create a variable called z assign x plus y to it and display the results in alert box so again, you got variable 5, x, variable y, 10. And so you want z, okay? So there's a z here. So you're going to put z here or z there. What are you going to do? Create a variable called z. What's that? Bar z for variable. And then what do you put in here? If I want to print into alert box. Oh. Uh, variable equals z z no we just want to we want to pull it out i think we got to put the word print in there I, I can't i don't know the alert box we could cheat a little bit you want to cheat what is it alert a l e r t alert there you go thank you very nice okay next exercise on one single line declare three variables with the following names and values First name's John, last name's Doe, age is 35. So we're going to make a variable. And so uh, what variable are we making? So last name is what? Well, let's just do backwards. The last name is equal to what? Doe. Uh, oh, that's a good, good thing, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And then what is John here? No, John. So this would be first name, yeah. F I R S T. Make sure you, oops, S T with a capital N A M E, first name. John, is it plus? What are we doing here? What are we doing? Oh, we're just in a single line. That's going to be a comma. Comma between, so we're doing one comma and then this one. And then this is going to be age. I think where do we? Oh, we got to put a comma after this. I think age equals thirty-five. I think that's correct. 
So if you notice, it's in one long line. Do you see that? It's in one line. So you'll notice there's a comma between them, comma. And so you're, you're making a variable. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, that's correct. So there you go. Comma, comma, there. Everybody got that? Okay, let's go. Boom. Okay. Next exercise, JS operators. Of course, what is an operator? Plus, minus, divide, those kind of things. Uh, alert. Multiply 10 with 5 and alert the results. So, of course, multiply is going to be the asterisk, right? Asterisk. Show answer. Yes, that's correct. Correct. Next one. Divide. That's going to be the this one, right? So backward slash, right? Show answer. Yes. Okay. And then the next one is going to be uh, alert the remainder when 15 is divided by 9. Alert the remain 15 divided by 9. Is it just divide? No, it can't be right. Oh, that's the percentage symbol, that one. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. That one's going to show up. There it is. That's the percentage symbol. And then uh, use the correct assignment operator that will result in x being 15, the same as x equals x plus y. So x is 10, y is 5. And so we want x equal to y plus equal, yes. Because we want to do what? Where was it? Is a great assignment arbor that would result in x being 15 plus same as x equal 15. Oh, got to put the plus in there. No, plus first. Dole. Use the correct assignment operator that will result in x being 50, same as x equal x times y. So instead of the, yeah, asterisk with the equal. Oh, asterisk with equal. Show answer. Very good. Okay, we're moving along. Data types. Use the comments to describe the correct data type of the following variable. Variable length equals 16. What is 16? Probably an integer, right? It, well, we use INT for integer. I believe so. I don't know. I do. That's what. I, that's what I've been doing. Swift. So I think I'm. I'm gonna. So in Swift, that's what that would be. And then this is a string, right? Because it's a name. And then x equals first name John, last name Doe. And so that would be a what? Yeah, an object. An object. Thank you. Object. Okay, so we got we got we did pretty good on that one. I knew integer and string at least. Not bad. We knew two out of three ain't bad, right? Uh-oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I got to capitalize this? Oh, do I have to capitalize the integer and object? Oh, it's a number? With capital N? Okay. Okay, so uh, what are we doing here? Execute the function name my function. Function my function equals alert hello world. Uh, is it return? I don't know how to do it. <laughs> like I said, my JavaScript's weak. I guess we could go and, and look it up the tutorial here. Let's look up the tutorial. Let me read that. Yeah, it's return, as you can see right there, return. So uh, that would be return most likely. JavaScript function is defined with the function keyword followed by the name, followed by parentheses. It's the same as in that's the same as in in Swift. And then their return. Return. So let's go back. 
it should be return. Oh no, my function. Oh, with the round brackets. What what was it asking me? Execute. Oh, execute the function. I thought I was trying to pull the value out. Okay. So my fun. So you're just repeating my function with two round brackets like that. Okay. What's the next one? Hello world alert. Okay, the function called my function. Um, do we do we start with function? Yes. Okay. So we start with function. F U N C T I O N function. And then we're doing what? My function. And then what are we doing? Round bracket, round bracket? No. What's at the end? Oh. Squiggle, yeah, that one. So we're going to go uh, this one, and then down here, this one. Like that. So function, my function with the uh, squirrely brackets. Like that. No? Didn't I spell it right? What am I? Oh, I forgot the parentheses in here. That was my mistake. Uh, it's above the, uh, by the return key. You got to use shift. No, you're going to turn this in for a grade. Okay, let's continue. It's awful fun, isn't it? Especially when I got the answer right here, right? <laughs> function my function, okay. Uh, get document, get element by ID, demo, enter, HTML, find my function. Make the function return hello. Uh, so my function... So this should be what my function. No, my func. What what, what is this? This has got to be hello in here. Wait. Uh, so okay, let's see returning a function in this language. Return. 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 That worked. Return. Hello. Okay, and then this one, uh, let's see. Make the function display hello in the inner HTML of an element with the ID demo. Function, my function, uh, document, uh, I guess it's return inner HTML. Is that what the, the, is that what the, the code was? What's the HTML code? Get element by ID. There you go. Enter HTML. So get element by ID. Notice how there's a capital E in there. B and I. And then what did I say was in here? I just said it before. Inner HTML, I N N E R H T M L, I believe is all caps. Yes. Show answer. That worked. So again, get element by ID, inner HTML, hello. You got that one? Okay, let's move on. Alert John by extracting information from the person object. Variable person equals first name John, last name Doe. Alert person? What are we trying to do? Alert John by extracting the information from the person object. I don't know, let's look at the object class here. 
objects again properties name car fiat model there you go here's how you, you pull it out method here okay javascript objects yes. variables that's after you've defined them here Variable first name John, last name Doe, age 50, color, eye color blue. Object name or property name, person, last name, person, last name. Okay, let me see. Variable person equals first name John, last name Doe. So we want first what did they say they wanted the alert John which is the first name so we need to pull out the first name so we type in person and then uh, we need the first name out of person I, I just don't know the syntax I know the person dot first name I had to cheat sorry so there's a dot between there There we go. Okay. So we want to. So first thing is you you you're taking your variable and then you're pulling out this value, which is John. That's why there's a dot between there. You got that? Okay. Next one. Add the following property and value to the person object: country or nor country Norway. So we're making a variable named person. And it has a value of first name, John. Last name, Doe. I guess we have to put a comma there because we're putting in between. So put a comma there. And then we just, this should be easy enough. We just say country. And then Norway. That should work. So if we spell Norway. Oh, Norway with quotes. My mistake. It's a string. Anybody got that? Don't forget the, the comma right there. Okay, next uh, we're going to do create an object called person with the name John, age 50. Then access the object to alert John is 50. So we're making it a variable named person. Uh, person what? Variable named person. Create an object called person with the name John, age 50. Then access the object to alert John is 50. So what am I asking here? Make it, oh, equal. Is that an equal there? No. You think it's an equal there? This is a dot. No. What did I I need to go back in time here. There's an equal, yeah, equal there. It's a colon, colon. It says a colon. So equal, colon, age, uh, we need to put a comma there, right? Comma there. And then we need to alert, uh, what are we alerting? What are, John is 50, John is 50. So we need um, person, dot name right and then this is going to be person dot age so this is not this is not that is this an equal there how do I what how does age be become 50 how do we make age be 50 here is it age here? But this is not right. I'm gonna cheat. Oh, it's a colon. We were close. I should have known. Name colon there. Age colon there. Okay, you get the idea though. There, right? Everybody got that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. 
event. The button element should do something when somebody clicks on it. Try to fix it. Button. Alert, hello, click me, button. So button is very common in, in there, in the um, syntax. So is there a button that like that? I don't know. I'd have to look. Let's do the tutorial here. Element event some JavaScript. Element event some JavaScript. On click. Okay, on click is what we're looking for. On click. On click is going to be the answer there. So this is going to be on click. On click. And of course, in JavaScript, there's a variety of you got on mouse over, on double click. You can do a double click as well. And uh, what was some of the other ones? On focus. On. I used to use use them for different things. There's also a drag too. I can't remember that one. So on click. When a button is clicked, the function my function should be executed. Okay, so I guess we're still doing on click, on click, and then uh, I guess this is my function. What? When the button is clicked, the function my function should be my function. Really? Oh, you got to put round brackets in there because it's a function. Okay, you got that? The div element should return red when somebody moves the mouse over it. Oh, I just told you that. It's on mouse over. On mouse, M-O-U-S-E, over, O-V-E-R. On mouse over. I think that's correct. We're going to see. Boy, what a, I haven't taught web development in four years. It's coming back to me. Anybody got that one? It's coming back. and It's shockingly coming back. Okay. Okay, strings. We already know a lot about strings, so let's do some strings. Use the length property to alert the length of, of txt. Okay, let's go and, and, and read that tutorial. Uh, JavaScript string is zero or more characters written inside quotes. You can use a single or double quote. You can use quotes inside a string as long as they don't match the quotes surrounding the string. So you can see you have double quotes here, but then you have double quotes with the word Johnny in single quotes. Single quotes with double quotes. The length property, to find the length of a string, use the built-in length property. So it's txt.length. Do you see that? txt.length. So we're going to go in txt dot l e n g t h length show answer that worked use escape characters to alert we are vikings uh oh why is that an alert so the escape one Escape characters. The backslash escape character turns special characters into string characters. The sequence backslash inserts a double quote in a string. Oh, here's the Viking example. In the variable x, we are the so-called Vikings from the north. So it's going to be forward slash quote Viking forward slash quote. I guess that's what I'm... single quote. I guess that's what I'm doing here. Okay, let's try. So... Oh, it's already double quotes in there, isn't there? Do we have to do the, where is it, the forward slash? Vikings? Oh, a single quote you're thinking? A 
single quote like this? I don't know. Let's show answer. Oh, we have to put the words we are Vikings. And then, but how are you going to do double quotes when there's double quotes here? I thought that was illegal. Weren't you supposed to do single quotes and single quotes? And it said it said you were illegal to do double quotes and double quotes together. Didn't it say that? I swear it said that. No? Okay, whatever. We are... So again, they used a double quote, which I didn't think was legal, inside a... Vikings. And then... Like that. I don't know. I thought that it was illegal to do two double quotes together, but it looks like that was their answer. Oh, maybe I am right. Before the quote? Here? Like this? Okay. Thank you. Okay, and then here we go. Consonate, consonate the two strings to alert hello world. So we need to put these two together. What is to put two two strings together? And it's equal to equal to comparison uh, do you see how to put two strings together Is it a semicolon in between? It wants to put two quotes together, uh, two two strings together into one. I just need to know the syntax. Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to cheat. <laughs> String one. Oh, they they just adding them together. String one plus string two. Wow, couldn't be as easier than that. Okay, next exercise. We're moving along. Find the position of the character H in the text string text. So H is going to be down, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight down. So I'm sure there's more than putting in the number word number eight in there. But I'm sure eight is going to have to be in there. Text length. String index of locate. Index, last index of. Last index of John. String index of locate is 15. 15. String search. Index of search are equal. String slice. Slice? What's a slice? Slice extracts a part of a string that returns the extracted part into a new string method and two methods. So, text length. No, we don't want that. We want string index of. We want to pull out. 
What's the question asking us here? I can't remember. Find the position of character H in the string. So it's going to be... We want a number. I was trying to give it... They, they're asking for a number, right? So we need to pull the number out of H. So could it be string index of 8? Finding a string in a string. We're not a string. We want a number. We don't want length. We want to find a value. We want a value index of index of oh here it is. Second parameter is fifteen. I don't know. What do you guys think? We look through this. Are we gonna to have to cheat again? Index of H. Okay, that that was it. Index of was it capital O in of? Like this? Is that it? Yeah. Capital O, O for of. Index of H. Okay. Use the slice method to return the word bananas. We just saw that. Slice. I just saw that. Where is it? Here it is. It's 7 and 13. What is 7? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it's the character length. Do you see that? It's the character so again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this would be ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen. What do you guys think? Ten, seventeen. Who says yes? Yes. Oh. Okay. Here we go. Use the correct string method to replace the word hello with the word welcome. Yeah. Word is it replace? It is replace. Simple as that. Replace. R E P L A C E. Replace. That was an easy one. Convert the value of text to uppercase. Whoosh. There's a replace. String replace. And then you see the forward slash. What, what's, oh, this isn't, what is this? String replace with forward slashes and the word in uppercase. What's the G for? It has to match. So what did I just say? I just said it. String replace. S-T-R R-E-P-L-A-C-E -E. Oh, that, that can't be right. Okay, I'm confused on this one. Text to uppercase. Boy, that doesn't make any sense. Text to upper case. The capital upper and the capital C. Two. And then round bracket, round bracket, like that. Well, there we go. Convert the value of text to lowercase. Jeez, how about what is the same thing? Well, yeah. what was the what was the example? No, but what, how did it start? Oh, I'm going back in time. I'm messing things up now. What was it? T X T dot lowercase. Oh, uh, is it of? Oh, two, two, lower, 
case. Okay. Get a value Volvo from Cars Array. So this is a uh, third one. It's going to be this one. We're going to do the um, locate. This is it. String index of no. We want. What did it say? What was the question? Get the value Volvo from Cars Array. It's the second one in the array. Can't we just say, give me the second value in the array? I mean, that's sort of basic all I want to do. I just need to know. The last index of JavaScript counts positions from zero. This is the first position in a string. One is the second, and two is the third. So we want the first one then, because that's number two. Last index of locate. String last index of. But that can't be right. It's not, that's not long enough. OK, let's cheat. Cars one. Oh, we're going with a var variable here. And we want this value, cars with that one. Didn't go far enough down. Cars. That would be the same in, 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 in Swift as well. I gotta put an S in there. Should have known that one. I think I'm getting tired. Change the first item of cars to Ford. Whoosh. The first item to Ford. So we need to replace Volvo with Ford. Ford. So we need to replace position zero. Yes, you're right, position zero. Where is the, am I in the wrong method here? Oh, I should be in the arrays tutorial, that's why. What do you guys think? Which one? So it would be, we need to replace the first one. It literally is the easiest way to create a JavaScript array. Variables, cars, saw, volo there. Space, the line breaks are not important. Declaration of yourself. New array. Changes the array. Uh, here's the elements. This statement accesses the value of the first element. Yes, we want to change the first element though. Change an array element. So cars zero equals opal. So we want cars zero, cars zero. Like that. That's it. I think so. Yes, that's right. Cars zero replaces this with that. Alert the number of items in array using the correct array method. Alert the number of items in array using the correct array method. So we would need to pull out three because there's three items in the array. So how do we get the items out? Referring to their array name. We need the number of items. Length, length, L-E-N-G-T-H, length? No, that can't be right. 
Oh, we need to put the word cars in there somewhere. Length dot cars. How about that? Cars dot length. I was opposite. So sorry. Cars dot length. Okay. Okay, just a few more. We're almost done. Use the correct array method to remove the last name of the fruits array. So we want to get rid of the last element. There was one way to, to find the last element. So we're not going by number, we're going by the last element. Did you see that in the reading? I saw that. I don't know which one it was. Uh, there is one for lat name access to members example first name returns no what is the last element oh, there you go fruit length the length property returns the value accessing the first array element accessing the last array element negative one variable last name fruits dot fruits dot length minus one So is it the name of the array length minus one? So the name of the array is fruits. Minus one, no, that can't be right. Pop, pop, I don't know. I didn't see pop in there. Did you see pop in there? In the reading? I didn't see pop in there. Whatever, but it said pop. Did you see that? Okay. Use the correct array method to add kiwi to the fruits array. So we just need to add to the fruits array. Does it say where to put it or just add it? Adds a new element lemon to fruits. So we just want to position it. So this is going to put it at the end. Six. One, two, three, four. Why is it six? Five, six. Oh, I don't know. Six. Fruits six lemon. So fruits. Oh, geez. Fruits. Uh, round back at uh, four? Or was it be five? Let's read that. Where was it? Fruits example. Adding an index. Anybody see that? The one with the, I don't know, I'm reading in here, Add adding to array element. The easiest way to add a new element to array is using the push method. Push. Okay, push. Fruits dot push. Fruits dot push. I was reading it wrong. Fruits dot push. And then, what was it? What, oh, kiwi, right? K I. W I Oh, I gotta put a quote around here. Does that look right? Ooh, that was right. Okay, last one. Let's do one more. Getting tired. One more and we'll be done. Okay. Use the splice method to remove orange and apples from fruits. Splice. Splice. Oh, this is just going to be a number, right? So we want, what are we, fruits splice. So what are we doing? Orange is one, and apple is two. One and two. That worked. Okay, that was an easy one. 
Okay, so what I want you to do is 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 take a screen grab of your your thing here that you did this many exercises. Take a screen grab right there. You say, what's screen grab? Command Shift Four, right? Make a screen grab. Turn that in on your assignment. 